we're not as cute as kittens and things Doesn't mean we deserve to go extinct An isopod is cute in the eyes of an isopod and friendship soon blossoms between the two of them. Gladiators was just the start for me The purchase of a submersible, the call of the sea I'd looked for love in all the wrong places I haven't been past the beast with a crustacean for ages There's no reason an isopod can love love I feel and cry although underwater is hard to tell It must be hell for them Eunice describes the isopod and words that don't quite rhyme where she left the Birmingham National Indoor Arena and humans all together in the search for true love and an even more extreme physical challenge. The isopod loved Eunice but grew ever angrier with her treatment at the hands of the wolfman and referee John Anderson and he vowed that he would get revenge upon all of humanity if he ever grew to gargantuan size. Turntables didn't help, and selling your turntables to buy guitars didn't help. A full understanding and appreciation of the game of cricket did not help, and talking crap or making ooh sounds at the end of songs definitely did not help.
crusty, crusty the ice apart. You live in a world that is upside down. Crusty, crusty the ice apart. Your eyes are green and your teeth are brown. You go to parties, get drunk, then you fall down. Oh, crusty, crusty the ice apart. Crusty, crusty. Don't be a stranger to me now Crusty, crusty, the ice apart You live in a world that is inside out Crusty, crusty, the ice apart When you gonna tell us what it's all about? You go to parties, get drunk, then you fall down Oh, crusty, crusty, the ice apart. Crusty, crusty, don't be a stranger to me now. Crusty, crusty, the ice apart. Crusty, crusty. Crusty, crusty, the ice apart. Crusty, crusty. Don't be a stranger to me. Space to think, get on.
an isopod in my bathroom What am I supposed to do? 
I've got a urine reinfection. And there's a gigantious buffonimus in my loo. I hear you like to eat fish, I support. But all I have to offer you is this piece of battered cord for a monkey looking sea creature. You're right, you're right for seesaw. I suppose, I suppose, I suppose. I suppose, I suppose, I suppose, I suppose, I suppose. You've got a really hard exoskeleton, I support. Just like an aquatic wood louse. But I really don't care how rare you are. I just want you out of my house I support I support I support I support I support I support, I support. I support.
Isopod. Come what may, come what will, come what waste your tasteful scales the same. They look like things from Independence Day, but slightly reduced in size. Soon we're gonna eat all the devout people. It's punishment for spreading spite. I suppose, I suppose, I suppose they are I suppose.
When I first saw this tiny isopod eyes I was shocked by their magnificent beauty Hadn't felt this way since I first laid eyes on you Cause you are like an isopod, yeah baby And I am like a husk of rotting fish You eat me up and I don't even complain Cause I'm dead I'd like to tell you the story of an encounter with my second household pet. My first, in case you were wondering, was a fantail goldfish called Graham, but he got eaten by another fish. I was paddling in the Bay of Biscay, partly because I fancied a dip, and partly because I'd been chucked off a Saga cruise ship for pretending to be an octogenarian vicar. The disguise worked okay when we left Southampton Docks, but I got found out after performing a medley of Cradle of Filth hits in the karaoke bar, and subsequently was forced to walk the plank. Schoolboy error, really. Anyway, while I was paddling away on the shore, I felt a peculiar nibbling sensation around my shins, and as I looked down, I saw a creature that looked like a cross between an armadillo and a mutant toast rack. My almost encyclopedic knowledge of rare seafood meant I instantly recognised it to be the Bathynomus giganteus, or the giant isopod to his mates. However, instead of eating his insides, we struck a deal with each other. In exchange for letting me ride on his back all the way home, I had to look after the creature, as if twere from my own loins spawned. We did. And this is our story. I found a giant isopod and kept him as a pet. I really like the way he put the shits right up my vet. He said his name was Gertrude and I took him to my house. My wife was screaming cause she thought I'd bought a huge wood louse. He said he liked canoeing and his favourite film was Jaws. He couldn't do the crossword on account of his fat claws. He had a bladder of such strength and bowels of such huge power. He produced dumps the size of cars and pissed non-stop for hours. One day I took him for a stroll upon the Sussex Downs. Passers-by were frightened of his noisy scuttling sounds. A dog came up and wouldn't give Gertrude his personal space. So the fishy bastard pounced at him and clamped onto his face. I knew that Gertrude wouldn't bite into the canine's flesh. Cause the say the meat he'd usually eat was never quite that fresh. Despite this, the dog's owner started acting quite distraught. And therefore, cause of this attack, Gertrude got sent to court. My Bathynomus Giganteus got sentenced for his crime. I never saw Gertrude again, cause now he's doing time. song about giant isopods and I wanted to take that challenge but there was a problem though I had seen lots of pictures I wasn't sure what a giant isopod was which bore a song about this kind of
they are. Thoughts be abundant in cold deep waters of the Atlantic and Pacific Ocean, but the venomous gigantic the species upon which the stereotype is based is the largest not in my support and it is the one most often referred to by the common neck giant I support. So is that what this song's about, the venomous giganteus. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Now, if you're a commercial fishery, you probably won't care much about this song, because giant I supports are a little interest to most commercial fisheries owing to the typical paucity of catches and I barely know. 